All right, welcome everyone back to Freelancer Discovery. And today, an, another interview, and this time with Wesker. Hello, Wesker. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the show, man. Thanks. It's fine. So, the Hessians, let, let, let us actually, wait a second. I, I want to inform everyone. So, because right now we have like one guy. All right. I mean, until the others arrive, we can just go for the uh, basic questions, so if that's okay for you. Yeah, go for it. Alright, Wesker. Leader of the Red Hessian Army. I have to ask you this uh, very basic question I ask all the faction leaders, which is... With what ideas you built your faction upon? Like, what has driven you to make a Red Hessian faction? Uh, so people think that it was kind of like a, I got the promotion and I went, like went from there um, and yeah. just wanted to like really build it up, like drive it. And I didn't want to build it up, but yeah. um, the way it kind of happened was uh, one day Zane just came into my PM and he was like, uh, yo, you want to leave the faction? He just <laughs> sort of gave it to me and he was like, oh, yeah, we, we need priest to lead because uh, everybody else abandoned it. And I was like, um... I kind of remember that, yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll take it. I think uh, you were somebody else in a uh, Scrog committee yeah. before the link, so it kind of just went from there. I guess it was Leon, yeah. I guess, I guess. Was, okay. Yeah, it kind of just went from there, and uh, have you have you actually have you actually followed what the uh, previous faction was doing, or did you like have completely different goals? Um, different? I was kind of just going. I if you ask a realm, I diverged. If you ask Zane, I went on par, and if you ask Bloto, I definitely went on par with what Bloto was doing. Uh, um, okay. I went a bit further with it, obviously, because I've had more time and, uh, well, yeah. I guess it's just not being Bloto kind of helped. Um, Bloto was a dev and it kind of rubbed people the wrong way that weren't with him, um, yeah. Yeah, versus somebody who wasn't a dev and was kind of like one of the own players. And so that kind of helped. And then that plus, um, getting better at the game and whatnot and improving definitely helped out and eventually I think it just became like a trend like the faction was just that faction that everybody could count on to have a good time yep. and since it was accountable like that it drew players in more and more and then we went from there and then you know came the big rounds of uh, we decided to siege a POB one day and we were like ooh this is fun maybe we could do this to a few more and then we sieged a few right. more and then we were like hmm maybe we can see some of the bigger ones and then we sieged some of the bigger ones and we were like hmm and then the uh, so it, Jorm spells happened. Yeah, kind of, kind of drew people in quite a bit. So, but I mean, there was this one thing, if, if I remember correctly, on the feedback thread, they were kind of QQing about something, and you wrote, "It's fine well, how things, things." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny how things worked out. Like, you guys have been like you had these other factions that were actually ganking you guys. Uh, whatever, and then the tides turned. You had enough members. Now, <laughs> other people start the bitch. Oh, this you. story. The you know story. Um, <laughs> Want to talk about this that? story? Was one. <laughs> so this 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 happened. Um, this was much earlier. This was right before I was like good at the game per se. Um, <laughs> well, the story kind of continues into when I got better, but. Yeah. We were a punching bag faction for a lot. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of unlawful factions are punching bag factions for other factions that yeah. are lawful. So, um, uh, by the way, if I'm if I'm faint or something, just let me know. I have to not talk as loud because I'm in a room, uh, not a room, but a, a place with more people. So I actually put you on 200, percent so you should be fine. Yeah. All right, good. But um, basically, we went from there, and um, well, we didn't go from there. We were getting pummeled, and so. Yeah. When I started leading, a lot of us quit. A lot of the older people quit. Reese quit. He was my old 2IC. Um, yep. Some other people quit that I don't regret having them quit because they were kind of assholes. Um, <laughs> I see. And as I improved and everybody else really improved, um, it really just took time. It just took us getting beaten. And um, the yeah. thing that happens to a lot of people is when they lose fights like that or when factions lose, yeah. especially against aces, and it wasn't like we were fighting like, you know, bad players. We were true, fighting some true. pretty decent players, and different combinations of good players on different classes. So it wasn't like you were just fighting like one snub ace. You were fighting like a bunch of people that yeah. knew how to fly caps and knew how to run bombers that could 
fly, you know, the old Berglamir, which used to have, like, fighter maneuverability with fighter size and bomber <laughs> guns. True. So, you know, you can say, like, oh, you were flying the old Odin. Well, I mean, they were flying old Titans, old Centurions that had, like, VHF shields. It, it, excuses out the door, basically. Like, there were a lot of good players on their team, but, like, our, our faction just we didn't quit like we kept exactly. practicing and getting better and like we yeah. grew sort of as a little group and the core members that were with us there are always with us now they might not still be in the chat but if yeah. i call on them and they're like yo uh want to like if they want to play i know that they'll come back and they'll play with us true so it's almost like a family in a sense that's that kind of built up from there that's the thing you guys never gave up and that's something i actually admire like when many people just go Oh my, we got ganked, and then whenever you lock, they, whenever they see you, they just log off, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, there was this it's one a, guy that did the, the meme where like five RM guys <laughs> were like flying around the cell. They yeah, saw one cool. RM chip. <laughs> after he logged in. Yeah, it, it, it grew to that point because we just, exactly. it, it took time. And a lot of people ask, like, you know, sometimes people come to me or would come to me that were starting up new factions and they look at me and they're like, you know, you have this faction that has managed to get this many people to log on. Yeah. How did you do it? And I was like, we didn't quit. Mm -hmm. We never gave up. We were at a time yeah. where, yeah, sure, there was more people to log against and we had a target on our backs, mm -hmm. but we didn't quit. And a lot of people just lose motivation. Pretty much. Yeah. And so it was, uh, it was good to go from there. And then... I think it's especially with unlawfuls too, because people like unlawfuls, yeah. but they see that the power that lawful players have and that lawful player bases can get really fast. Like you know, mm -hmm. what chance would a few Molly players have against Baf? Mm, like yeah. let's be real, yeah. not gonna have any chance, right? True. Um, but they look at us and they're like, you know, you guys can do what I've always wanted to do it as an unlawful, and that's what also drive draws people in. True. It's that sense of accountability for newer players drew other people in, and then. The HG's willingness to train new players who are loyal, and this is like advice I could give to any faction leader who wants to basically bring a faction to being on par. The yeah. biggest threat you can make to veteran elitist factions, which I want to say I don't fall under that category because we've accepted some new players a lot, yeah. Yeah. Um, but is be willing to teach and work with new players. Yeah. If you're willing to teach and work with new players, especially the ones that are fresh to Disco, those are the most loyal players. That's true. That's true. They I will mean, always we... be the most loyal players. I mean, look, what, what's your favorite faction, Snake? You love SCR, right? Was that your first <laughs> yes, faction? Yes. That's, that's why, it. right? You're loyal to that faction. Pretty much. <laughs> it goes. It goes with saying. That's true. No, that's true. That's true. So, uh, fuck. I just had a question for my mind. Hold on. Uh, oh yeah, but I mean, we we have to agree. It is hard. To uh, invest hard. so much time in a new player, like I know, like back in the day in SCRA, it's just like I, I'm just like sometimes I just went late to work, you know, what I mean? <laughs> just yeah, literally late night staying out with these guys, trying to get them something excited or whatever. No, but, yeah, uh, definitely. Um, <laughs> like I was late to the gym a few times. I wouldn't <laughs> say late to take life because that yeah. caught up with me real quick. Um, in some cases, yeah, but it does take time. It does take dedication, especially from the leader, yeah. leader's point. That's a big thing too. When leadership shakes up in these earlier factions, that's kind of like a big sign of like, oh, there's instability. This kid, this is not good. You, yeah. The faction members will rely on like the leader a lot. Like, yeah. leaders should kind of like, in a way, lead by example. And I know I say that people are probably laughing behind their seats right now, like this guy. <laughs> but I mean, like, hey, we got a lot of people to love. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes it wasn't for the best purposes. When I say not for the best purposes, I mean sieging POBs just mm -hmm. out of like fun. Uh, but like it got people to play the game. It, it also drove people in other ways too. Like if I said like we can't be doing this or this, which happened many times, that would be the you know that was that was how it ran. Yeah. And if I like if I kept pushing on like oh hey I have this video of me doing this playing on a snub like you know killing three people at once or something like mm -hmm. this like it would kind of it would push the other faction members to be like yo I want to get better at this yeah. that's another thing that people come to the faction for two as well for and that they're just like you know you're good at this game how do I learn they True. came to you know they go to like it, that's not just me too that's other players yes if you're the leader and you want to make your faction like that much better if you invest the time to make yourself yeah. like just better at the game and more knowledgeable and whatnot and you become accountable in that sense yeah people are gonna see that and people are gonna want to be a part of your faction pretty much that's true dude. or if you have friends like 
hang on to those friends and whatnot, and be willing to work with newer players. It's just a big thing. That's true. Being open to ideas and stuff too. That's there are newer players who they came into the faction. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick one out right now. Shelko came into the faction. He was his first faction. He played with us, and then he left. He was like, I don't think this is for me anymore. And I was like, All right. Well, if you want to rejoin, you can rejoin. Yep. I always leave that window out to people that are yeah. leaving. Yeah. If you want to rejoin, you will have your rank and your spot. And nice. he rejoined. He doesn't fly often, but he rejoined, so... <laughs> Shawnee, I guess that's Wasser, is it? He's... <laughs> you were mentioning core members, right? Yep. And uh, Wasser was just literally spamming the chat. Wasser was one of them. Who, who He's are... in the HD right now. He, said, he was who... one of the OGs. <laughs> he said, who are those core members we're talking about? <laughs> Well, let's see. We go back in time. We have Zane, who's been around. Aerealm has, like, remotely kept in touch with me. Bloto has re very remotely kept in touch with me. Um, yep. Reese, I try to PM every now and then. Yep. Um, Luster joined a little bit after that. And then, um, who else was there? Who was there from the very start? Dino. Um, mm. Dino is still in, even though he's, like, quit disco. Yeah. Um, we have also got the Alexes, who are there, and there's a few more. I know there's a few more. Uh, Antonio joined a little bit later on, but he's not playing disco anymore, but he was still stuck around for a while. Yep. But I would say more, um, it was just Zane, Wasser, me, um, the Alexes yep. had, let me look at the channel right now, there are definitely more. Yep. Jesus Christ. Some of them are just not, they're not holding their ranks anymore. Gagadug was one. Gagadug was, um, he's still in. He was HC. He still is HC. Okay. Um, and that's all I can see off the bat. Some of them have left, but they're still in touch, pretty much, is what I'm like going at. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Gagadug's still holding Halpman right now, so he's actually in mid command, but <laughs> there are a lot of, there are a few others too. I'll jump into the, uh, Next question, right after Wasser was like, Shelko asked, Would the Hessians focus on Rhineland or the Omegas more? Because, of course, yes. I think if I want to put it a little bit more open, I guess, where are the Hessians focusing now? Like, are they going to storm Rhineland or is it now with the Corsairs returning, especially after the Gallic War, right? Uh, do you guys have to? protect your grounds or what's going on i'd say we're more defense now yeah um we've always ruled more defense the only offensive places we've ever really pushed were um that incident in three which was just a, it's a bunch of dice on the board and mm -hmm. luckily we came out with our cards kind of full ish or kind of good because uh we didn't lose castle right uh, yeah, crossing that... my fingers and knocking on wood um castle was an but interesting case that you have to understand when it comes to stuff like this you have to anticipate like what what do the story what does the story team want versus what do you want and the story team is ever changing it's never a constant yeah, in disco there's true. never a constant like um narrative for how the story will go <coughs> i could wake up tomorrow and you know we'd be that's true <laughs> fucking xenos or some shit like <laughs> battleships yeah. like, true, it, true. It, at this point i've i've really not concern myself with that that much though I, I do have to give the faction an answer in that if i'd say we're gonna be defensive and then just continue with the whole fez thing in 47 speaking about fez that's what people have been asking too like what are you going to do with fez what's the plan um like, the plan is to blow it up uh <laughs> obviously yeah we had plan set in motion for that will it happen probably not will we knock it out of the system probably there's a good chance um I want to bet my cards on that. Uh, I know yeah. I've heard things about like our lore numbers versus other faction lore numbers. Um, right. I heard in the stream that uh, Benorin said that our entire populace is like the size of uh, what, like one fleet or something, mm -hmm. something funny like that. Oh yeah, f so, uh, like one battle group. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, I heard about that, and I was like, hmm, <laughs> where did he get this from? And then I was looking, and I, to my knowledge, so far, I haven't seen anything. Would it, has it probably been said? Yeah, it was said by Caves before. Um, he actually posted up a thing saying that one Bath battle group was bigger than our whole, like, populace or something like that. And that yeah. is, he also wrote about how his character blew up our battleship, too. But, I mean, I'm kind of reluctant to just 
believe anything I hear until it's written down on yeah, the forums true, and go from true. there. There's no way to like anticipate anything the devs are saying at this point. I'm not trying to use that as an excuse to say like, oh, we're as big as Rhineland. No, we're not. We're obviously not. You know, like that's no, not the case. Yeah, but, it's, um, obviously, yeah. But, like, right. it's it's not a constant, so I don't know. The best you can do, really, you have to understand is like the devs have reiterated this now, is that what you write on the forums is not going to go into the game 99% of the time. Yeah. Unless it's already pre-planned. So actually... I can say that like I want to do this and I'll push it into the dev chat, but I mean like it's it's probably not gonna happen. And to be honest, I mean, like Yeah, yeah. That's the answer my faction wants to hear. Me personally, it whatever happens happens at this point. Is yeah. I just don't know what's I mean, gonna change, what's not gonna change. So it's it's funny though, cause uh, I don't know if you read, but like Durand actually admitted uh, like last week or something that the uh, official factions actually have no impact on the NPC lore. As yeah. He says. No, of course. <laughs> You can write about something, but it's not yeah, gonna happen. Exactly, it's not canon law. You're just it's really just repre like a... representative. And I was like, dude, doesn't that sound like just clans? Or aren't we just literally clans then? If you go by that logic, you know I mean, I mean, you can look at it like that, or you can look at it like, it, I still like personally, I still want to play the game regardless of what happens. I mean, yeah. if they take away our jorms and shit, as long as I have an Odin with destroyers, I'm gonna be logging in every day. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, that I get a chance. True, true. It's it's just like that's my way of looking at it, really. Yeah. Um, I don't think we should lose drum, by the way. But um, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> no, I don't think we should lose our drums. I think we should keep our drums. You should um, keep your drums for yeah. the sake of keeping other players interested in the faction. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, like <sighs> it's because some factions will look at it like oh, or some people look at it like oh, I don't have a say in this, and like you know. Mm -hmm since they don't have a say in it it's suddenly they're interested in it and it is like they're interested in it is void but i mean like how can you expect a group of people to consider everybody's perspective and like always well yeah how yeah. can you expect them to like you know abide to everybody's like mm -hmm. narrative that mm -hmm. they want to say like i mean i've gotten angry over the story once or twice certain but like it's, yeah. it's not really the end of the world at the same time is the story team always the best are there really obvious mistakes that they could fix are there really obvious plot holes in the story are there really obvious things that like are kind of make you go what yeah 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 definitely. there's no real there's no like there's no out good outcome 24 7 is basically what i'm trying to get at yeah like yeah speaking of uh, outcomes um again now that the gallic war ends um omega 3 omega 49 what's going on guy like wh what's gonna happen to be honest with you, I don't, I'm, I'm still fresh out the boat i'm still trying <laughs> to understand what's going to happen because yeah. the scra have changed um a lot recently it's a lot. That's a lot. A very yeah. lot. Like, bend over to Bretonia and let them take a planet <laughs> a lot. So... You're reading my mind, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And then, we've also had, like, you know, like, the lore, the, the narrative of the story lore changed to now jump drives are now canonized. Oh, yes. <laughs> jump drive yeah. battleships into yeah. stations and conquer them within a glimpse or blink of an eye, so... True. I really don't know. <laughs> I, I hope we have another Omega-3 scenario where we, we, where we can... Yeah. Um, I mean, there no, was the, have events like that. There was a discussion. Personally, I'm looking forward to whatever happens. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm cutting. It's, it's okay. Just, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, to reiterate this, like the Edge Worlds and Border World conflicts, mm -hmm. you know, we saw what happened in Omega Three. There were more natural raids and more natural yeah. large fights there than there were like large events for the Gallic War mm -hmm. in the past like months from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. That little spur of conflict alone bred so much activity got to yeah. the point where there were like a hundred and something players on and it wasn't an event it wasn't like everybody said you know you have to log for this this is like much. a written story event it was like a oh hey look there's something going on maybe i should play the game exactly. that's like <laughs> stuff like that and i i, I pm justin about it and i was like this this is like the future like yeah. this is what's this is what will drive the community up and i think they're maybe gonna get it maybe hopefully if any of them are watching the stream yeah. that they understand like that's my perspective yeah whatever goes goes but i mean i'm looking forward to whatever happens even if we like lose three and 49 not that we ever had them but like yeah i know what you mean it would be a good baseline for stuff i mean there was there were many questions like um yeah after the gallic war is over will Bretonia actually give those bases or planets whatever back 
to either zoners or IMG, right? And uh, I guess we can all assume it's not gonna happen. But um, it also wouldn't make sense if they would, right? Because I mean, they just had this war and um, they'll be like, no, nah, I mean, we're gonna keep those bases, right? So, so then, I wouldn't expect them to give anything back at all. No, they're probably not gonna give anything back. And Yeah. I mean, it's probably gonna be a fight for it. I've had those leaders, mm -hmm. one of them, PM me and be like, we're gonna take this back, right? And I kind of looked at him and I was like, ah, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, true. How about you go a few and a few other people? But I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I doubt them back. Yeah. If they don't give it back and they want to fight for it, and we can take it back and it, you know, sparks activity, then go for it. Sure. Yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, like if you asked me a few months ago, I would have been like, <laughs> yes, like slamming my fist against the desk, like we are taking this back. Like yeah. speaking, like. I don't know Kennedy or something like holding my hand up like you know <laughs> we're taking this back for the people ask not what the ask Red no Hessian what... Army <laughs> ask what you can do for the Red Hessian Army like exactly. no we're not gonna um uh, it's but yeah. now it's like I it doesn't it doesn't like bother me as much it's, it's probably because it, I just have a life now <laughs> yeah but, like, I guess so yeah. I mean it's it, it's it, whatever goes goes it's weird though I mean I, I, I don't know if you watched the um Rhineland uh, interview of Banner and I did. Uh, the thing is, <laughs> uh, question mark. No, uh, the thing is, uh, you heard the rumors about Rhineland. Instead of fighting Bretonia, they're gonna help each other. Yep, so I know. I'm just wondering. Lead. Yeah, it's kind of. Isn't that overkill? I'm just saying. <laughs> for I mean, the Omega Factions. Is war fair? <laughs> is war fair? <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I mean, no. that can work both ways. Um, true. True. I mean, we had our little downfall of getting our asses whooped. Well, not really our asses whooped. If you look at it from a gameplay perspective, we kicked yeah. Bretonia's teeth in. But if you look at it from a lore yeah. perspective, we got our teeth kicked in. Um, yeah. But then again, you know, we also had our, like, we had our uprise of stabbing the council, uh, not the council, um, the, the UN. UN, yeah. So, true, true. And that was like an expression of our rage from Omega 3. Yeah. There was, there was yeah, no lie. There was completely expression of our rage. But, um,. Totally, totally. I mean, it's not. I don't see how it's going to be overkill. Yeah. Um, Rhineland's lore is very tricky. It's not exactly what you would expect. I, I mean, I can't say it with certainty, but every time Rhineland sort of gets on their, um, yep. thinks that they're on head, like headstrong, something yeah. comes up and it undermines them. I mean, this could be the one time where they're like, yeah, Rhineland, like you know, Rhineland military, your Krieg army, like yeah. Blitzkrieg, German. Well, wonder um yeah, wonder boff like let's go um true but i mean i'm just I saying that it's gonna amount to them like push they can't really like eh, well i'm just they, i'm just saying okay maybe I doubt it. It, it, with lore and all maybe it doesn't make much sense but i'm just saying uh people have been always asking this oh you know bring back the rhineland versus liberty war and shit right but i'm like guys look there is another opportunity to have Mm -hmm. Such a war in Our Omegas, are right? You know what Those I mean. Wars are going out of date. Yeah. So I'm just saying. When is the last time you logged on your own <laughs> to partake in a house war? <laughs> legit, legit question. Like asking you. Like when was the last time you logged on your own to partake in a house war? Mm. On one of the house sides. I don't actually remember. There you go. <laughs> it's it's losing interest. Like if it True. was gaining your interest, you would log, right? True. Like if you saw a ton of you were like hmm i should make a ship for this faction exactly then you yeah. would log right yeah like yeah. i only have grn right now because omi's back like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I i'm not uh yeah. i'm not like the biggest i'm not a fan of lawfuls in general anybody yeah. that knows me, me like me, knows me that I, I don't enjoy flying lawfuls but like house wars either way seem like they're kind of on the fritz it doesn't yeah. seem like they're getting much more attention anymore it's not ha it doesn't have the traction that it once had and the kind no, I wouldn't say the player bases. The player bases are still there. It's just the the interest isn't there. True. The diversity in player bases too is much stronger between lawfuls and their unlawful counterparts. But I'm RHA just... player base is very polar from that of RM and that yeah. drives like conflict 